But now across the globe, President Assad has been denounced in no uncertain terms, accused of heinous and murderous acts, brutal crimes and murderous folly. One by one, the major Western powers have lined up to condemn the massacre. And in a coordinated move, all remaining Syrian ambassadors and most diplomats have been expelled by the UK, the United States, Canada, Australia, France, Germany, Italy and Spain. John. Well, we're joined now by our international editor, Lindsay Hilson, from Washington by Matt Fry. Um, Lindsay, a lot of diplomatic activity in Europe and in Turkey. Yes, it was quite interesting. Today, Prime Minister Erdogan said that these massacres, he said they were mocking the world. They were a defiance against the world. Those are very strong words. He has spoken against the Syrian government before, but as a neighbouring country, somewhere which has been talked about as a possible place which could have safe havens for refugees, that's important. François Hollande, the new French president, said that he was going to put a lot of pressure on President Putin, who's visiting France on Friday. But Laurent Fabius, the French new foreign minister, he said, look, the Syrian army is very big. No one at the moment is prepared to go in militarily on the ground. So I don't think we're at a point where we're going to see any kind of decisive military action against the Syrian government. It's still in the realms of diplomacy. Matt, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, but full stop Syria. No question of uh, much military action or anything like that from America, yeah? Well, indeed, John. I mean, Lindsay's absolutely right. Uh, and in fact, the White House spokesman, uh, perhaps reading her mind, said just a few minutes ago, there are no military options that we, the United States, are pursuing at the moment, even though, John, the language has got a little bit more robust as a result of this appalling massacre. The reason is the following. The first one is that military planners here, as well as the administration, as well as opposition candidates, don't see any real military options when it comes to removing the Assad regime. Also, as you pointed out earlier, they've lost their appetite for regime change as a result of Iraq and Afghanistan. And of course, in the Libya enterprise, they were very much, as they put it, leading from behind. Now, the second reason is that they still are be believe here, or they hope, one should say, that there is a diplomatic solution here involving the Russians, getting Russia on board at the Security Council, which they'll try and do tomorrow. Why? Because that ultimate diplomatic option has not yet been exhausted. Until it has, they can still think along these lines and they don't have to go back to square one. Well, Lindsay, what, in, what, what can be done about Russia? Well, I think what the Russians are looking at, I gather, is what they're calling the Yemen option, which is the idea, as, as you had in Yemen, you had President Saleh who stepped aside in favour of his deputy. So you, you had regime change without having regime change. So that is the kind of option which I think that the Russians are thinking about. But Syria is much more complex than Yemen because of the sectarian issue and because of the family issue. It's really run by a family maf mafia. So Bashar al-Assad stepping aside, well, for whom? It's very hard to see who that could be. Having said that, the next question is, what would be the tipping point for the Russians? Is there anything that the Western countries can guarantee the Russians to make them put more diplomatic pressure on Syria? Because in the end, what do the Russians care about? What they care about most is that they do not want contagion. They do not want a Moscow spring. Uh, Kofi Annan presents his uh, findings to the UN Security Council tomorrow. Matt, what are we expecting? Well, I mean, they're already meeting behind closed doors. There's an awful lot of arm twisting going on, presumably. But I don't see at the moment how they can get the Russians on board for something more robust than what they already have on the table. I think what you might see tomorrow is the kind of last gasp attempt to put a little bit of life back into the Kofi Annan plan, even though it has received its death certificate on the ground and elsewhere, just to see if that still works. Because after all, that was something that the Syrian government signed up to, that the Russians signed up to, the Chinese the rest of the Security Council, this is something that they still believe in the back of their minds they might be able to work with. But the real problem here, John, is that unlike in Libya or perhaps even indeed, uh, indeed in Yemen or any of the other problems that they've had uh, in, in the recent years, they don't believe that there is a real alternative to the Assad regime. They believe that if they put in more arms, uh, they will just fuel what is effectively already a civil war. And no one wants that, even though it means that the Americans and others have to stand by and watch these appalling atrocities take place. Matt Fry in Washington, Lindsay Hilson in London.